Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, My Liverlies. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the Mama family. Mama's got your back, at least for makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Today is True Love Tuesday, and we are talking about such an underrated couple. We are talking about Mr. Danny DeVito and his lovely wife, Rhea Perlman. Guys, before we get started, a very special, very warm welcome to any of those that are new to my channel. I am so incredibly happy that you are here. If you enjoy the content, I do so hope that you will mash that thumbs up button. I hope that you will subscribe if you have not already. And I hope that you will ring my bell, turn on your notifications, so that way, next time I upload a video, you can come right back here and we can hang out together again. Also, I do have my eyes done already, guys. Oh, it's so super pretty. I used a couple of IBY palettes. I did make sure to do a TikTok on today's eye look, just in case you're interested. I will make sure to have the tags for that and all of my other socials, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff listed in the description box below. Guys, if you are not following me on all my other socials, you definitely should go do that. I post fun content every single day. And if you're following me everywhere, you don't have to worry about missing a single moment of it. Also, if you see me looking over in this direction, it is because I am looking at my notes. Today's video shouldn't be a super long one, but you know how uh, True Love Tuesday goes. So I hope that you will sit back, get comfy, get cozy, get you a big old glass of something to drink, and let's go ahead and jump right in. In my opinion, Danny and Rhea are the most slept on celebrity couple in history. Guys, they've been together like going on 50 years at this point. And while their love story is maybe a little bit, uh, it, it's a little bit out of the ordinary, y'all, it's still pretty freaking spectacular. So uh, I hope that you are just as interested and intrigued about this story as I am. I remember the first time I realized that they were actually a couple was when I saw Matilda. And, you know, I saw that they kind of had like this kind of chemistry on scene. They were kind of like this perfect couple. They're both very interesting looking people. And, uh, you know, I just thought that it was like an on-screen thing. But then after that, when I grew up a little bit, I realized that they were actually husband and wife. My mind was blown just a little bit. But then I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And though Danny and Rhea's relationship is definitely not the standard, like compared to standard marriages, mm, definitely not the same situation. I wouldn't say it hasn't been successful. I would say, I would argue that their relationship is one of the most successful ones that I've spoken about on True Love Tuesday up until this point. As always, we're going to start at the beginning and work our way up to the present. We're going to go into a little bit of backstory on each of them individually, and then we'll get into them as a couple. We're going to start out with Mr. Danny DeVito. Born Michael Daniel DeVito Jr. on November 17th, 1944 at Raleigh Franklin Paul Morgan Memorial Hospital in Neptune Township, New Jersey. His father, Daniel DeVito Sr., was a small business owner, while his mother, Julia, was a homemaker. Now, he was the youngest of three siblings. He has two older sisters, and Mm, Danny was a very, very smart child and smart in a way that he knew how to play his parents to get exactly what he wanted. He actually was able to convince his father to send him off to a boarding school so that he could stay out of trouble. But really, he just wanted to get out of that house and away from his two sisters. It was too much for him. So he got exactly what he wanted. He went away to school, had a fantastic education, and then came back. Fun fact, actually, he was raised in Asbury Park in New Jersey, just a couple of miles away from the original Jersey Mike's sub shop. Guys, I know we've all seen those commercials where he is, you know, he's at the football game and he's talking about Jersey Mike's. That actually is such a genuine collaboration. When he was younger, it was his very favorite place to go and eat. Not only was it close, but it was affordable and it was delicious. And actually, Danny became their very first celebrity spokesperson because he genuinely loves the sandwiches so much. So the boarding school that he attended was the Oratory Preparatory School, where he graduated in 1962 at 18 years old. 
And then very swiftly after graduating, he came back home and he started working in his sister's hair salon. Now, this is something I had absolutely no idea about, but did you know that Danny knows how to do hair and he knows how to do makeup? The whole reason he got into theater and acting in general was because as he was working at his sister's salon, he wanted to learn how to do makeup professionally so that they could offer another service at the salon. So he decides to go to school and learn how to do it professionally. He ends up attending the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and Lord have mercy, this was, this was his doorway. This was how he found and discovered his absolute love of all things theatrical. He graduated from the American Academy of the Dramatic Arts in 1966 at the age of 20 years old and very shortly thereafter began performing in off-Broadway plays. Now it did take just a little while for Danny's career to really take off and honestly he is one of the most prolific actors of his generation. He might not be this super big action hero leading man but y'all, he's been in absolutely freaking everything. Uh, he started off in Dreams of Glass in 1970, but it wasn't until he landed the role of Louis De Palma. Do you guys remember that? On the hit TV show Taxi, uh, that he gained some real popularity and recognition. Since then, he's worked pretty much nonstop. Like I said, he is a workaholic. He enjoys acting. He enjoys his job. And he enjoys what he does. Now, not only is he in front of the camera, but he's also incredibly adept at handling himself behind it. Uh, he has so many really fantastic, fantastic credits under his belt when it comes to both producing and directing. Some of his most memorable roles will include uh, Get Shorty, Matilda. Guys, we're going to talk about Matilda here in just a minute. One of my very, very favorite, favorite movies from my childhood. I could genuinely sit here and recite that movie to you word for word. Love that movie so, so much. Uh, Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That one was fantastic. And my personal favorite, Renaissance Man. If you've never seen that movie, because I try to talk to people about that movie all the time and nobody has ever seen it. And it makes me so sad. My grandma, my Gigi, she had it on VHS and I watched it all the time at her house. And I don't know why nobody's ever seen it. Uh, but basically he plays a teacher and he goes to these, this army base and is trying to teach these children that are basically unteachable. Anyway, it's a great movie. It's almost kind of like, what's that movie with Robin Williams and Matt Damon? Oh, I, I'll pop, I'll pop it up here. But anyway, very reminiscent of that movie, just army based, but so good. Anyway, uh, Renaissance Man, Hercules, he played the, uh, he played the, the Minotaur or the, the goat, the goat guy on Hercules. He was in, he's been in so, so many things, but when it comes to producing, he produced Matilda, he produced Pulp Fiction. He's done a bunch of really fantastic, fantastic movies. He also has his own production company and through that production company, he's produced a bunch of really fantastic films, uh, including, but not limited to Aaron Brockovich, which is another fantastic movie. He also works in TV as well. And he produced a season or I'm not sure if it was a season or the entire thing of Reno 911 Miami. Most recently, he has been starring on the FX sitcom, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I believe he plays a character by the name of Frank Reynolds, who I believe is a very cantankerous, kind of pervy old guy, but maybe in a little bit of an endearing way. I don't know. Uh, I don't have cable, so I really don't watch the show very often. I do know, however, uh, that it does get quite a bit of acclaim, both from critics and viewers. Everybody seems to really enjoy the show and say that it is very, very funny. Now, all in all, Mr. Danny DeVito has about 152 acting credits to his name. He's got 48 production credits and about 24 directing credits. All in all, I would say that is an incredibly successful career and y'all, he's nowhere near finished. As for Miss Rhea, while her career isn't anywhere near as prolific as Mr. Danny's, she is no less accomplished. She was born Rhea Jo Perlman on March 31st, 1948. She's about four years younger than Mr. Danny DeVito. Uh, she was born in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. So y'all, they really are kind of a match made in heaven. Though he is from New Jersey and she's from New York, 
they're kind of like, they're the same person, really. Uh, she was born to Polish immigrant father, Philip Perlman, who was a manager at a doll parts manufacturing plant. And then her mother, Adele, was a bookkeeper. She was raised in the Jewish faith and has a sister named Heidi, uh, who also works in television and ha is more of a writer. She's not so much an actress. She works more behind the scenes, uh, does a little bit of producing, writing, things like that. Actually, her sister worked on the show at Cheers, as did her father. Now, this is such a fun little tidbit that I learned while researching. Both Rhea, her sister Heidi, and her father. All three worked for the same TV show at different points in its lifespan, but they all three had something to do with this one TV show, which I thought was so much fun. So Rhea caught the acting bug from her father. Her father desperately wanted to be an actor and just really never could bust in to the business. In the mid 1980s, her father decided to pack the bags and load up their family and move across the country from New York to Los Angeles so that he could maybe, you know, follow his dreams of becoming an actor. And while he never did, you know, like really make it big in the acting world, again, he did appear in over 30 episodes of the show Cheers. And he even had a couple of speaking parts. So though he never really did make it big, I guess he got to live his dream just a little bit. Uh, and that love of acting, that desire to be in film and TV, really rubbed off on his daughter uh, and she kind of took that she ran with it. Rhea began her acting career in off-Broadway plays much like Mr. DeVito uh, but it wasn't until 1970 at the age of 22 that she really got her first notable acting role and this would be on the show Taxi with Danny DeVito. And she actually played Danny's girlfriend on the show. Uh, she played a woman by the name of Xena and she was kind of like the dispatcher on the show and it was an absolute hit. She played the girlfriend to Danny's character Louis De Palma. Following that she played sassy wisecracking barmaid Carla Tortelli on the sitcom Cheers and this is where her career really took off. Rhea's character on that show became such a beloved character to so many. She was actually a part of the show until its very end. So successful was her character on that show that she was actually nominated for an Emmy every single season that she was on the show, except for the year 1992. Not only was she nominated every single year, but she won four times. And she won for the Best Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy. She was the most awarded character on the entire sitcom. Most recently, she played Barbie creator Ruth Hampler in Greta Gerwig's Barbie with Margot Robbie. Fantastic movie. I thought it was absolutely stellar. Uh, but other than that, she really hasn't been in a ton. I feel like Rhea just kind of like sits back and she enjoys her life. Uh, when it comes to her career, most of it was kind of motivated by Danny. Danny is definitely the workaholic uh, of the two. And he's the one that really motivated her to go out and work and, and get roles, things like that. But I think when it comes to Rhea, she just kind of wants to sit back and enjoy the fruits of her labor. Now, just because her resume might not be as uh, spiffy, as Mr. DeVito's, that doesn't mean that she is any less successful. When it comes to actual net worth, Rhea's net worth is about a little bit over 90 million, while Danny's is only 80. Go figure. Now on to the juicy bits, Danny and Rhea together. How did they meet? How long have they been together? What was their relationship really like? Why did they go belly up after over 50 years of being together? Like what's really going on here? When it comes to Danny and Rhea's relationship, Rhea was 100% the aggressor. She was 100% the pursuer in this whole situation. Rhea was the, the lion in the grass. Like she, she stalked this man, not really, but she saw something she wanted and she went for it. So Danny and Rhea met in 1971 after Rhea watched Danny perform in a stage production of The Shrinking Bride. Now, Rhea was actually there to watch her friend perform and her friend was friends with Danny because of course they were working together. And throughout the entire performance, Rhea, who was supposed to be there supporting her friend, could not take her eyes off of Mr. DeVito. At this point, Rhea is 23 
Danny is 27, so he's a little bit older, a little bit more sophisticated, and she is just entranced. She is entranced by his stage presence, and just, oh, there's something about this man that she just cannot get enough of. Now, the play took place at the Mercury Theater, and the play wasn't very long, but again, throughout the entirety of this performance, who Danny is playing, kind of like a demented stable boy, uh, I it, it just, it, you wouldn't think it would be a role that really just would be like, oh yes, I am, I am sexy, hear me roar. Not that kind of role, but there was something about him up on stage that really just did it for Miss Rhea. So as soon as the performance was over, she meets up with her friend backstage and tells her friend, listen, like, is this guy, is he single? Is he married? Like, what's the situation? Her friend tells her that, yes, he's single, he's available. Do you want an introduction? So Rhea's like, uh, yeah. So her friend goes and introduces Rhea to Danny. They strike up a conversation, and before you know it, they're all going out to grab a bite of eat. They go out to supper after the performance. So they're all sitting around the table. They're eating. They're talking. They're having a fantastic time, and Rhea is not being subtle about the fact that she is interested. She is, like, if, if, if her, if she could, like, carry around a neon sign that said anything, it would be like, hey, hey, interested right here. Danny was picking up what she was putting down, and he indeed was very interested as well, but a little bit shyer. He was not used to women being quite so aggressive, not maybe aggressive, but quite so honest and open about their attraction. So he was kind of taken aback by it just a little bit, but he was down for it. Uh, so they exchanged numbers that night, and very quickly thereafter, they began dating. When you know, you know, and their relationship, they just knew. They just knew that they were right for each other. And because of that, their relationship progressed really, really quickly. Guys, they met, they exchanged numbers, they started dating. And then after dating for just two short weeks, Rhea decides it's time. She packs her bags and she ends up moving in to Danny's Manhattan apartment. And they've been together ever since. Uh, they kind of hooked up and they never left each other. And, you know, again, when you know it's right, you know it's right. And they just kind of like followed their guts. It felt good being together was like, it was a good thing for them. They made each other happy. So they just went with it. Now, over the course of their relationship, Danny and Rhea have worked together quite a few different times. First, they worked together on the show Taxi. Uh, you have Danny, who's playing Louis De Palma, and then you have Rhea, who's playing his girlfriend. And then they worked together on the movie Matilda. And this is quite, I mean, most definitely is my very favorite Danny DeVito anything. Like Matilda is such a, it's such a big part of my childhood. I know, I, like I said, I can recite it word for word. I've watched that movie so many times. It was in that chocolate cake scene with, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I always wanted to try that chocolate cake. Anyway, it's one of my very favorite movies of all time. And in that movie, they had such, like, as I watch it now as an adult, you can just tell that they have a chemistry with each other. And I do think that both of them are rather interesting looking people. So them together as a couple is kind of like, it's a no brainer, right? But then to find out later as an adult that they actually were together, it just made that movie that much better, even though they really were an awful couple. Like the Wormwoods were not nice people. But there is so much more to the movie Matilda than most people have any idea about. So in 1996, Danny took the book Matilda written by D Ronald Dahl. Uh, it was a book and it was a beautiful book, but Danny adapted it for the screen. And when he was casting the movie, he came across the very perfect Matilda, like the most perfect Matilda ever. Uh, and that was nine-year-old Mara Wilson. Now, Mara has said that working with Danny and Rhea on Matilda was probably one of her favorite parts of her career. Uh, it really was just a fantastic, fantastic professional point in her life. But behind the scenes, though Mara's professional life was going, you know, splendidly, her personal life was, was not as nice. Danny and Rhea wanted to foster a sense of family and goodwill on the set of Matilda. So after Mara was cast, they would regularly invite Mara and her parents over to their home for pool parties and barbecues, cookouts, things like that. Just trying to get to know her and really foster, like I said, a good vibe on the set of Matilda. Unfortunately, 
right after they started filming, Mara's mother, Susie, was diagnosed with breast cancer in March of 1995. Now, Susie and Mara really idolized the character of Matilda. She was such a strong, independent, self-assured character in a world of books about boys. So it was really special between Mara and her mom. And even though the, the breast cancer diagnosis really put a kink in their plans, uh, Susie refused to let Mara step down this was super important for both of them, and they all decided to just kind of forge on. Danny and Rhea both stepped up for Mara and her mother in a very big way. So throughout filming, they would oftentimes offer to babysit Mara if uh, her parents had to go to doctor's appointments or if Susie ended up having to stay in the hospital. So throughout the filming of Matilda, it really was, it, it, it was very special and hard and difficult, but beautiful at the same time, just a really complicated situation. So Mara just ended up just in general, spending a ton of time with Danny, his wife, Rhea, and their children. Now, sadly, just after filming wrapped on Matilda, Mara's mother, Susie, she succumbed to her disease and she ended up passing on April 26th, 1996. While filming had wrapped, it wasn't done in post-production yet. And it always was just a very big, it was the heavy weight on Mara's heart that her mother never got to see her portray such a special character for both of them. But this is where Danny's kindness really comes into play because Danny ended up revealing quite a bit later that indeed Mara's mother had actually got to see the film, though it might not have been the finished product he somehow, some way, was able to sneak a copy out of the studio and he was able to show it to Susie in the hospital room. So just days before Susie passed, her and Danny sat in her hospital room and they watched uh, the, the nearly completed edit of Matilda together. Now that's just one of many ways that Danny's innate kindness has kind of come to play throughout his career. In a sea of self-absorbed, rude, hateful celebrities, you have Danny and Rhea who genuinely care, who genuinely care about not only the, the movies they make, but the people that are in them. And I think it's so beautifully refreshing that they're just, they're just genuinely nice people. And not only that, but they are still close with Mara Wilson to this day. Rhea and Danny got married after 11 years together. They got married on January 28th, 1982. I think they were waiting for their careers to take off, or maybe it just wasn't something they were super worried about. Either way, after 11 years together, they finally decided it was probably time to make things legal. And y'all, their wedding day is, I mean, I think it is so, it's just, it's very it's very them. There was no elaborate wedding ceremony. There was no big white dress. There were no flower flower girls and bridesmaids and nothing like that. It was a no fuss, no muss, no frills type of thing. Really, it just kind of happened on Danny's lunch break. Rhea rented an antique dress and the whole thing was kind of rushed. Danny raced home from the set of taxi on his lunch break. As soon as he got home, he slapped his suit on and they got married. They got married on a rainy Thursday afternoon in Los Angeles and that was pretty much it. Like I said, there was no fuss, there was no muss, there was no big production. They just kind of did it just so they could say it was done. 1982 would end up being a pretty big year for them, both professionally and personally. So just a few months after they got married is when Rhea ended up getting the position or getting the role of Carla on Cheers. And then a few months after that is when Danny's role on Taxi came to an end. And that's when he really started devoting himself to film and producing. At that point, both of their careers really skyrocketed. Again, she had, Rhea had a fantastic time on the set of Cheers as Carla. And then, you know, Danny, we all know, he went on to have really kind of a fabulous career. Now, Rhea and Danny would go on to have three children together. Their first child, Lucy Chet DeVito, was born about a year after they got married in March of 1983. Their second daughter, Gracie Fan DeVito, was born two years after that, again in March. Fun factoid, all three women of the DeVito household have birthdays in March. Can you imagine how hectic the month of March must be for them with all those birthdays? That's got to be kind of crazy. And last but not least, 
finally a little boy. Their third child, Jacob Daniel DeVito, was born two years later in October of 1987. Now, all of their children went on to pursue careers in Hollywood. Now, their oldest, Lucy, she is the only one who went on to become an actress, and I believe she had a recurring role on Melissa and Joey. She's been in a couple of other things. Uh, she's, you know, she's not a super big time actress, but she does get work. Now, their second daughter is more of the creative artsy type. She is definitely more of an artist. And then their son, he too works in Hollywood, but he is also behind the camera kind of guy. And he works on production and is more of like a, a director's assistant, that kind of thing. Now, all three of the children are still extremely close with their parents and they all have fantastic relationships. If nothing else can be said about Danny and Rhea, they were fantastic parents. Now, Gracie was the first to make them grandparents. She made them grandparents in 2023 when her and her husband, Andy, gave birth to their daughter, Sinclair Lucille DeVito. Now, of course, Lucy, not to be outdone, she is hot on her tail and she's gonna make them grandparents for the second time this summer. Now, throughout Danny and Rhea's marriage, one of the biggest things, like say the glue that held the relationship together was support. And I find that to be a recurring theme, especially with these super successful Hollywood marriages, you have to support your partner. And I believe that's true whether you're in Hollywood or not. Supporting your partner is like a cornerstone of a good marriage. And Danny and Rhea definitely have that down pat. Whenever either one of them was offered an opportunity, they were always asking if they could bring their partner in on it. Uh, how can they make this opportunity work for the pair of them? Their relationship was a marriage, but it was also a partnership. And I figured that is one of the biggest things that kept them together for so long because they practiced that not only professionally, but also personally. Like it, when it came to marriage, when it came to child rearing, when it came to everything was down the middle. Everything was as much your burden as it was mine. And I feel like that is such a wonderful way to keep a marriage strong. And I feel like Danny couldn't even really answer that question either. Uh, I don't know if he is, it's just his love for the business or if he's just scared to stand still. But while Rhea enjoyed her job and enjoyed working, Danny loved it. And it seems the more success Danny earned, the more he craved. And the more he did, the more he wanted to do. And, you know, before long, it felt like he had kind of left Rhea in his dust a little bit. And he kind of moved on to bigger and better things. And at a certain point, Rhea felt like she was kind of like holding him, holding him back a little bit, you know? Rhea said in an interview that her career was never something that she would sacrifice her marriage for. Unfortunately, Danny didn't feel the same way. Now, on top of Danny's insane work ethic, there were also rumors that he had a little bit of a wandering eye. Now, this has never been substantiated, so it's just conjecture. I don't have any proof of this at all whatsoever. But from multiple sources, I was able to kind of confirm that people have made statements about the fact that Danny enjoys female attention. Uh, never necessarily that he's ever acted upon it, but he does kind of go out of his way to receive it. And while initially this didn't really bother Rhea, it seems like the older they got, the longer they were together, the more she expected that, just kind of chill out a little bit. And instead, it just got worse and worse. Now, like I said, there have been no confirmed cases of infidelity on either side. So I'm really not uh, citing that as a reason for them kind of like busting in the long haul. But it definitely was. Mm, it seems like it might have been a small factor in the grand scheme of things. Both Danny and Rhea have been rather tight-lipped about the true reasons for their separation. However, they both only have great things to say about each other. You know, when uh, couples, celebrity couples, they release those statements, with all respect, we still love each other, we still respect each other, we just no longer want to be together. In this instance, I genuinely believe that. And honestly, I feel like the biggest contributing factor to their separation is just the fact that Rhea wanted to slow down and Danny just wasn't ready. After 30 years of marriage and 40 years of being together, Danny and Rhea eventually came to the decision 
that it was time to separate. They stopped living together, not sure who moved out of where, um, pretty sure Rhea stayed in their family home and then Danny went and got another house elsewhere, but they ceased living together pretty much immediately. Now, when they called it quits, it wasn't like they just gave up and just like, yeah, we're done, right? So after they called it quits, they actually did try to get together and give it one more good shot. And they did, they were pretty successful for another four years. But you will never believe who actually convinced Danny to really try and give it another shot with Rhea. So they separated for almost a year in 2012, but then in 2013, they decided to give it another shot. And that is in large part due to the advice of Danny's friend, Michael Douglas. Michael and Danny have worked together on multiple different movies, but namely Romancing the Stone. Uh, and actually, Danny and Michael have an incredible friendship. And Michael is very good friends with Rhea as well. So uh, they, you know, like the whole double date, the whole kind of thing, like they're actually friends with each other. And after he heard that Danny and Rhea had separated, he kind of lost his mind a little bit. In his opinion, Danny and Rhea were like the perfect couple. They were genuinely perfect for each other. And not only that, they liked each other. Even after 40 years of being together, to still be friends with your partner is really kind of rare. And he told, he told Danny, he was like, dude, you're a fool. You are making the biggest mistake of your life if you don't try to make your marriage with Rhea work. Now at this point, Danny, he's 68. Rhea, she's 64. They're old, they're, they're, they're cantankerous, they're tired, you know, they're, they're gonna give it the good old one last college try. And they did, they gave it that one last try. It lasted for four years, but at the end of that four years, they were just like, this just is not going to work anymore. Again, neither, Danny would not compromise. He would not compromise on his career. He wouldn't slow down. And Rhea was just ready to be a grandmother, right? She was ready to sit back and enjoy the fruits of her labor, enjoy her golden years. And Danny just wasn't there. And because of that, they just weren't compatible anymore. Now, again, I think the reason that their split was so amicable is because I don't really think there was infidelity there. I don't think that either one of them really stepped out on their marriage. I just think that they were different people. They had grown apart and where they had been best friends for almost 50 years, that just that time had just come to a close. Danny and Rhea separated one final time uh, in March of 2017. And since then they have lived pretty separate lives. And I say living separate lives for as much as two people who are still married can. Guys, it's been seven years, seven years since they decided to call it quits for good. And can you believe that they are very much still legally married and have no intention of ever getting divorced? Legally, that is. It was hard on them, especially in the beginning, to really figure out this new life, right? Because they're no longer together. And guys, you have to remember that they got together when Rhea was 23 and Danny was 27. So for the better part of their entire adult lives, they have been together. So learning how to be something different after such a long time together, it's got to be, it's got to be incredibly difficult. And for Danny, it seemed a little bit easier because he was so ready to kind of fly the coop, I guess. But for Rhea, she had quite a bit of a, she had, she had a bit more difficult time trying to navigate this new, this new uh, episode, this new chapter of her life. And in doing so, she learned a lot about herself. She learned a lot about who she is as a person. And she has no intention. She has no intention of going out or ever getting remarried or dating. She is very content in just enjoying her grandchildren. Being a grandmother is like her favorite part of life right now. And while her and Danny are very much legally separated, they are still married and they are still friends. Guys, they have three children together. They've spent the better part of their entire lives together. So there is no just cutting that person off, right? So they still talk on a daily basis. They are still very much friends, but that's where it kind of ends. So they enjoy the friendship part of their relationship. It's just the romantic aspect that is no longer, it's just no longer part of the equation. Uh, when asked about like her whole situation with Danny, Rhea said, we are still very good friends and we see each other very often. 
our family is still the most important thing to both of us. It was very difficult at first. It took time for us to come to this somehow pretty decent understanding of this new relationship that we have with each other. And like I said, even though they've been separated for the better part of seven years, and now that Danny is 79 and Rhea is 75, they still, they, like y'all, there's no intention for either of them to ever get remarried. Uh, Rhea was asked like why, because again, it's it's a pretty odd situation, right? They are well and truly divorced in everything but legalities, right? So why not just go ahead and get divorced? Andrea said, what for? She said, I don't know why it's difficult for other people, but Danny and I have always loved each other. Plus, we have three amazing children together. We really do agree on almost everything. Important anyway. We were together for 40 years, and that's a long time. It was a hard transition, but everything smoothed out eventually. We're friends. We're happy. And that's what matters. And with that, I leave you with one last question. What is the true measure of a successful relationship? Is it how long it lasted? Is it how many children you have? Is it just the fact that you stayed together and didn't get divorced? In your opinion, what truly makes a relationship successful? Is it being able to end the relationship without any hard feelings? Like, I really feel like there are so many different interpretations of what success really means. And in my opinion, I think that their relationship was incredibly successful. Guys, that is the end of today's video. This is the finished look. What do we think? Do we like it? Do we love it? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, as always, everything I used in today's video will be listed in the description box below. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up before you leave. Guys, I love you so, so very much. As always, no filters, no fancy lighting. It is just me sitting in front of my camera telling you guys an epic love story, hoping you guys are enjoying what I'm doing. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and remember, you're important. Bye.